in 2014, two years after they first started dating, Mom and David left the house. Nobody knew where they'd gone. When Sandra left, I didn't think that, that would be the last time that me or my children would see her. I went back into the house to get the house ready for sale. I was completely horrified and shocked to see that on the master bedroom, there was a huge industrial-sized padlock. That's the kind of lock you have on a, an outside garage or a lock-up. The door would give way before the lock would give way. That is to keep a person in or out of that room. There was newspaper completely covered the whole window in its entirety, so nobody on the outside could see through what was happening inside this room. I just think it's very disturbing and sinister that you would go to the extremes to A, block the inside of the house from outside, and B, put a lock of that sub of substantial lock inside the house. I was surprised of the, the mail that was at the house. There was absolutely every single bill and red letter and final demand and court summons that you could imagine. There's so many letters here. Bills from the electricity company, from the phone company, from the local borough council. Penalty for a parking fine. Tax credits where they're recovering the money back credit card details, more parking fines. Here's one about the mortgage company. So the mortgage hadn't been paid for many, many months. Wow. Sandra didn't have an overdraft or a credit card before she knew him. So this sad state of financial affairs, in my opinion, has all been brought on by David. The car that your mum and David have been driving, finance on the car, not paid. You're talking about a 35,000 pound car. It was top of the line. The car was a present for my mum, but financed in her name. Effectively, given a car that she had to pay for. He always told us that he was doing very well for himself and, you know, buying flash cars, having, you know, expensive watches. And looking through this, it was all faked. My mum was an only child. She was very close with her parents. My nan and granddad both sadly passed away, and my mum didn't turn up to the funerals. It was so out of character, but deep down I knew she wasn't going to come. I haven't seen my mum in seven years. There has been some contact normally on a withheld number. If I want to call her, they don't pick up. And in my belief, the conversations, they've all been scripted. It just feels like I'm speaking to a robot. To this day, I, I don't actually know where she is. I mean, she's never once allowed me to know where she lives. My mum was a loving, caring woman. And it just seems that there's someone there pulling the strings. I believe the person behind all of this is Freeyard.